Hello friends and welcome back to Dayton Dies. I am not dead quite yet, and neither are you apparently, so I guess we can both be grateful for that. We are diving into part number five of I Work at the Only Pizza Place in Town today. It's a six part series, so this is the uh, pre-finale, I guess, if you will. <laughs> I'm excited to see what happens. Things really started heating up in the last episode, so without any further delay, we're going to go ahead, jump in into this thing and see what we've got today. I work at the only pizza place in town, part number five. The previous parts are all in a playlist in the description. You know, there are days where I really freaking hate this job. In particular, we had a bit of a hostage situation literally the day after my last post. I know what you might be thinking, who the hell robs a pizza place? That's what I thought when someone walked in around closing and pulled a gun on us. And by us, I mean Mr. and Mrs. Formaggio, Nick, and myself. The man in particular looked to be the biker type. He was overweight and looked to be in his late 40s or early 50s, and he had a long beard. This isn't the first time that something like this has happened. It's usually either someone seriously fucked up on drugs, or a passerby who thinks that they can just rob a store, consequence-free, and then skip town. Seeing as how it tends to happen frequently, we actually do have a bit of a protocol, and that is where monsters actually come in handy. That is, if we can't just get to a gun without the robber noticing. Believe me, we tried to warn him not to go out, but he didn't listen. They never do. Some return tore him apart before he could even get on his motorcycle. He didn't even see him coming. Nick was understandably nauseous from seeing it and threw up. He wasn't used to it like the rest of us were. Uh, I remember just starting out. Seeing him spew actually made me feel a bit nostalgic. <laughs> After that, it was just a matter of making sure that the coast was clear, then getting the money back. Now, this plan won't work if the robber gets swallowed whole. Sometimes the monster who swallows him will cough up the money, which is usually in a plastic grocery bag. But man, we were doing so good. We didn't have a robbery at our store for like an entire year until that point. But the silver lining is that we did manage to get the cash back. Enough of that, though. I want to tell you all about what I learned about that, what I'm going to refer to as rainbow thingy that I mentioned in the last post. To start, I have some bad news. The town lost some people to the new monsters that showed up. Me and people that I know were lucky enough to have survived, but other people who didn't have the weapons to fight these things weren't so lucky. Chuck told me that they found about five bodies and that five were missing. He told me they tried their hardest, but they just didn't have the equipment or the manpower to deal with these new creatures. Truth be told, he looked pretty distraught about the whole situation. Chuck is a good guy, and I do hate seeing him like that. So I promised to help him solve this situation. That started with calling Carl for an update on the rainbow thingy. Bizarrely and annoyingly enough, it seemed to have vanished since landing near his property. He said he spent hours looking for it, but found nothing. He even got a search party together to help him, but it yielded similar results. The only thing they did see was a tall figure with gold eyes. Not gold as in yellow. Carl and several others described them as looking like two big almond-shaped eyes that looked like they were made of solid gold. They couldn't make out the rest of the figure because of how dark it was in the forest. The only reason they noticed the eyes is because of how goddamn bright they were. I told him not to be so reckless and how dangerous the forest is. He told me, No shit! I only live here, Pete! I said to him that his point was taken, and to call me if any new developments occurred. Naturally, he's also been keeping the police updated. Speaking of which, Carl has actually hooked him up with some explosives to deal with these new creatures, in exchange for them looking the other way on the fact that he owned explosives. <laughs> it's supposed to be a temporary solution until we can find the right combination of whatever colored runes to keep these things away, assuming that runes will still work on them. 
Now, the town was lucky enough to have not lost anyone since the last incident, mostly due to the fact that the town was now under an emergency, home-before-sunset curfew. It was in effect until we were able to solve this problem. And as much as I hate working on my days off, the weekend is really the only time that I can investigate anything, if I'm not called in, that is. Nick was nice enough to accompany me. Our search started on Saturday. We headed to the town library to see if Alice knew anything. Alice is a nice woman. She's 30 and works alone. I don't know how she manages everything without help, but she does find a way. She greeted us with her usual cheerful demeanor, and I quickly introduced her to Nick. After they shook hands, the three of us got to talking. So, Pete, it's been a while since I've seen you here, and I didn't order any pizza. What's the occasion? Well, it's about what happened last week. Oh, that. It's a real shame what happened. I'm surprised I didn't have any trouble. To be honest, I only heard about what happened the very next day. Wait, you mean none of the new creatures attacked the library? Nick asked her. No, none. It's not that hard to believe. The library's so quiet that the creatures do tend to ignore it. Anyway, we were hoping there might be something here to help us deal with the new ones that have been popping up, I said. If you mean a book, I'm not sure that there is. Aw, oh, come on. You don't have, like, any old books lying around or anything? Nick asked. Well, I do have this one book. It's from the town's early settlers, but it doesn't have any symbols in it. Just pictures. Mind if we take a look at it? Sure thing. The book she handed us was old and leathery. It looked like she had made repairs on it to keep it from falling apart. Looking through it, we saw sketches of various monsters, some of which I didn't recognize at all, but two definitely caught my eye. One of those being the worm creature that we saw, and the other a pair of eyes with the word gold beside them and a question mark. That was on the last page. After looking through the rest of the book, we closed it. Then I told Alice that we had to head out. Thanks for your help, Alice, I told her. No problem, Pete. It's been too long since I've had some of Formaggio's pizza. Well then, I'll have to bring some by. Later. Bye. After that, Nick and I got into his car. Then he asked me, where to next? I told him I was about to give Carl a call, when coincidentally my phone started to ring and I saw that it was him. I put him on speaker, and then began speaking with him. Carl, I was just about to call you. Is something up? I need some help. Everybody else is busy, so I figured I'd call you. What exactly do you need help with? No time to explain. Just come on over, he told me, and then hung up. Should we head over there? I get the feeling that we definitely should. It didn't take long to drive there, only about half an hour, and Carl was waiting for us far away from his property. You should probably park here, he said. Why? Nick asked. Because I have traps set up in my yard. What kind? I hesitantly asked. Just some bear traps. Oh, well, that doesn't sound too bad. And a few landmines, and I think I also got some C4 laying around. <laughs> and there it is. <laughs> <laughs> why, why would you have all that? Nick asked. Because of the new fuckers. They come anywhere near my property and they're going to leave in pieces. What if someone just happened to wander over here? It's cool. I had a barbed wire fence set up. See? He asked, pointing. Between the trees, we saw parts of the fence that he had installed. When did you get all of this? I asked. Earlier this week. Some people helped me install it. The fence, I mean. All the other stuff I put in myself. <laughs> now hop out. I'll help you inside, Pete. So, what exactly did you need us for? I asked Carl once we were inside. We could see clear locked cabinets with weapons in them lining his walls. This, he said, holding up a long silver pendant. At the end of it was a flat golden star with a clear diamond imprinted on it. Oh. I mean, it's pretty and all, but did you really need us to come all the way out here for that? He rolled his eyes and then responded, I got this gold-eyed fucker! Huh? How? Honestly, 
in pure luck on my part, I was searching the forest again when I caught some movement from the corner of my eye. I thought it was just another creature, so I quickly turned and swiped at it with my pocket knife. Afterward, I heard something hit my boot, followed by fleeing footsteps. I got a glimpse of those gold eyes, so I know that it was the same one. That reminds me. We actually saw a sketch of those eyes. It was in an old settler book that Atlas had at the library. So, this isn't the first time that thing has shown up, huh? Guess not. Anything about that rainbow thingy? Unfortunately not. Damn. Anyway, I need you guys for a stakeout. There's a chance that Gold Eyes may be after it. What's your plan? Who knows how long it'll take to show up, if at all, Nick said. Don't worry, I got plenty of room and plenty of food. <laughs> Just make yourselves comfortable. Nick and I sat by the windows, watching and waiting. It took until sunset for me to spot something in between the trees. I saw what looked like two pieces of gold floating in the darkness. Look, I said, pointing. Carl and Nick looked out the same window that I did. There's that son of a bitch. Come on, Carl said, grabbing a rifle and then opening the door. Hang on, I said, grabbing my crutches. I hobbled out right behind Carl and Nick. You want this? Carl asked the pair of eyes, holding the pendant out in front of him. Carl, don't antagonize it. We have no idea what it's capable of, Nick said. Carl ignored Nick's comment and continued. It didn't take long for the figure that the eyes were attached to to walk right up to the entrance of the fence and into the light of the sunset. The three of us were surprised to see a stereotypical gray alien. He was tall. I'd say over eight feet. Its mouth was in a neutral position as it stared at us with its shining gold eyes. It held a large metal briefcase in one of its hands, and it wore a black business suit with a red tie that it did look really good in, if I'm being completely honest. <laughs> the alien just stared at us for a few moments before Carl aimed his rifle at it. Wait, I told Carl, putting up my hand to stop him from shooting. What? He asked, lowering his gun. It's not doing anything, it's just looking at us. So what? We supposed to have a staring contest with this fucking thing? I could at least scare it off. Maybe we could just ask it to leave, Nick suggested. Of course, why didn't I think of that? Here, I'll try, Carl said. You, walk off my property, he told the alien, finger walking on the air. Understand? He asked it sarcastically. Clearly, the alien replied calmly. We were shocked, to say the very least. You can talk? I think the answer to that question is fairly obvious. Who are you? And why are you here? I asked it. My name in my native tongue is probably too long for you humans to remember, but in English it translates to Zol. And I have two answers to your second question. The obvious one is my necklace. It's important to me, and I want it back. And the other answer is in relation to the new creatures, which I'm sure that this area has experienced once again. What do you know about it? Plenty. If you'll let me inside, I can tell you everything that I know. Now, hang on. I don't know if we can trust this guy. He could get his necklace back, but I want him off my property, Carl said. What makes it yours? Zol asked him. Because I was here first. Pardon me? Were you alive 150 years ago when I came here last? I don't recall seeing you. Then again, 150 years is quite a while, so my memory might be a bit hazy. Smart ass motherfucker, Carl said. What's in it for us if we let you in? I asked Zol. This, he said, pulling an old book out of his pocket. It showed a page that had a creature that we didn't recognize on it, with some runes drawn beside it. You know how to stop the new creatures? Nick said. Indeed I do. Will you accept my offer? Carl? I asked, looking over at him. Gah, fine! I should probably warn you where the explosives are buried. No need. I saw where you put them, 
Zoll said, casually stepping around them, much to Carl's irritation. <laughs> Later, Zoll was sitting on the couch beside Carl. His pendant was on the table beside his open briefcase. In it looked to be some kind of laptop. This is insane. There's a real-life alien sitting on Carl's couch, Nick said, gesturing towards Zoll with his arm. He and I were talking in the kitchen. I know. Honestly, I feel like I should be more surprised than I am right now, but, uh, I'm not, I replied. I guess living near all the other crazy shit has caused us to be, like, less surprised at events like this. Don't get me wrong, it's still crazy, but, like you said, it doesn't really feel as crazy as it should. Guys, Carl called to us, and then told us to come into the living room. Something up? Nick asked once we were seated. I wanted to explain some things. First, Carl here seems to be under the impression that I brought in these new creatures. This is not the case. I merely arrived at the same time that they started showing up. Then what caused them to appear? I have a theory. The second thing to clear up is about what you refer to as the rainbow thingy. That is my ship. I have it hidden in the forest. Let me guess, it's invisible, right? Carl asked sarcastically. Actually, yes. Oh. <laughs> so, what's your theory? I asked Zoll. To put it simply, someone let these creatures in. Not just the new ones, but the old ones as well. What? Who would do that? And why? I'm not sure. But I came here to search for an answer. Why would you do that? Because I promised the townspeople I would help them when I returned. And because my planet is also being overrun by these creatures. And I'm searching for the way to stop them once and for all. Y your planet? I'm only one of a handful of survivors that managed to escape. As we speak, those monsters have taken the entire planet over. I happened upon this planet, where parts of it were giving off the same energy reading as the portals that those monsters come from. Oh, so they do come out of portals, Carl said. Yes, we tried to fight them, but we eventually ran out of resources and were overtaken. Well, if you help us, we'll help you, I said. Good to know. I say we search tomorrow. I've been searching by myself. For what, exactly? Another being, like me, or at least some trace of them. Got it, but we gotta be home before tomorrow night. Very well. I think I'll head out now. Can you three do me a favor and not mention our encounter to anyone? I think that would be for the best. We all agreed, and then Zoll left. We went to bed shortly after that to prepare for the long day ahead of us. The next day it wasn't very rewarding. We covered a lot of ground and found absolutely nothing. I tried helping as best I could, but having to hop around on crutches really made me a burden more than anything else. The only thing that I could do was be a lookout for any creatures, which, to my credit, I was pretty decent at, and I was able to warn everybody before we were attacked. The other silver lining was that Nick got the book that Zoll showed us to Alice. He told her that we just happened to find it in the forest, but we didn't remember where exactly. And he told us that she would get to work immediately, making copies for everyone. When all of us were back at Carl's house, I asked Zoll if there was any chance that we could see the inside of his ship. He told me that he would think about it, but that it would have to wait for next week. And he stressed that we were not allowed to touch anything unless he gave us permission to. So, that's a bit of motivation to get me through the week. I'll be sure to let you know about the inside of Zoll's ship in my next post. Shit has been nuts, obviously. Well, it's always been kind of nuts, but yeah, more so than usual. <laughs> Anyways, I'll see y'all next time. This is Pizza Pete, signing out. Aliens! Of course it's aliens! <laughs> Been a while since we had some aliens on the channel, so uh, welcome back to our extraterrestrial friends. He does seem like a pretty cool guy. 
Is it a little bit suspicious that he and the creatures kind of arrived at the same time? Well, yes, but there have also been a bunch of different creatures in the supposed 150 years that he's been gone. He also handed out a book that presumably will help the entire town to fight off these new, never-before-seen monsters, so I tend to trust him at least a little bit. What I really want to know is, what is the end game here? Do you want to take over Earth? Establish a little colony or outpost? I mean, I'd be happy if just Zol wanted to kick it, but I don't know exactly how many survivors he has or if a town this small can really sustain that many survivors. So there are a lot of questions yet to be asked, but so far Zol has proven to be a pretty good guy. I guess we'll have to see how the story wraps up tomorrow. I do hope that you guys like, comment, and or subscribe on this video. If you haven't quite yet, maybe share it around. I do appreciate that. In order to join us tomorrow, you're going to have to keep yourself safe out there. If an alien drops his necklace, you be sure to give the necklace back to that alien. Because he'll probably help you out in some way that uh, can't be completely defined <laughs> at the current moment. Anyways, I hope to see you again tomorrow. And until the next time, my friends. Bye-bye.